The Great Influenza by John M. Barry. After having a conversation with the, the guys I work with, having gone through the flu season and it's up and everyone coming down with it at work and trying not to spread it around and trying to avoid it, you started talking about other flu outbreaks in the past, the swine flu, which was all over the news, and the Spanish influenza. Now, I've obviously heard about it, but didn't really know much about it. And so I ended up getting a book on it. But surprisingly enough, there were a few guys of the younger generation that didn't know anything about it. So I ended up tracking down a pretty detailed book, settled on this one. And oddly enough, it's one of the few books that I actually own a physical copy of. Most of my other books are either in the audio format or ebooks. But this one, I broke down and got the hardcover copy. There is a lot of reference material on the inside, photos and the like, and I really enjoyed it. The book starts with a brief outline of like the medical medical history, basically, and how um, the hospitals back then were not as efficient as hospitals now, which is pretty terrifying considering that this virus, they were very ill-equipped to handle. They couldn't even tell what it was as it was doing its laps around the globe. He starts the book off as a... Uh, referencing various doctors and their first accounts of the virus and how terrifying it was, not being able to figure out what it was, why it was so deadly, and ultimately how it was spreading so fast. John M. Barry does a, a good job or a good job detailing all the various cities and how they had handled it. And oddly enough, where what where the flu actually started, it's an American flu, not a Spanish flu as the name suggests. But he does go into interesting details on like why it's called the Spanish flu, even though it's from the United States. How these flus happen and why this flu was so dangerous as opposed to the regular flu that we're used to dealing with nowadays. What's the difference? Is it because we have better drugs nowadays or was it a different flu type? So he really dissects it the whole era and remember this is right at the end of or right around when world war one was happening so the country had a lot of problems to deal with it was a very bad time for a infectious flu virus to start wiping out whole families which oddly enough there is a large discrepancy the tens of millions and how many people that this virus actually killed. For example, in New York, it was very devastating to the point where they stopped keeping track. It was so bad. So if you look on the historical records in New York, it wasn't that bad. But the reality was it was that bad. They just didn't have the staff to keep up with all the different records. And in Philly, they needed to raise war bonds. So whoever was in charge of that decided to throw a parade, even though the Surgeon General had advised against it because of the flu. We need people to stay home and not congregate, which is exactly the opposite of what a parade will do. So they ended up having a horrible outbreak in Philly. Whole families devastated. There was a conga line of people going into the hospital on a procession of body bags at the back, all because they didn't listen to the Surgeon General. Precautions were not taken. So I think that it's incredibly appropriate that people nowadays, those deaths associated with the Spanish flu are all lumped into World War I since World War I was a huge factor in how this virus was able to spread around the world. And it did lapse around the world. It wasn't just one wave, it kept doing laps. And some people who didn't get it on the first wave got it on the second wave because it would mutate and kill very indiscriminately. It would kill healthy people, young people, people who could normally withstand the flu. And he also goes into detail on what made this one different than the regular seasonal flu. For example, there are three different flu types. One is the seasonal flu that we all know every year that comes around. There's another one that's very similar to that. And then there's the type that's the Spanish flu, very contagious and very deadly. And he goes into detail on how you have one person who gets sick with two separate viruses. One virus is very infectious, but not very deadly, not very dangerous. Another virus is very deadly, but not very infectious. So what happens when those two viruses infect the same person or more specifically infect the same cell? How does that affect the daughter viruses? Well, the daughter viruses can adopt different traits from either virus. It can be very hard to catch and when you catch it it's hardly does anything to you or it can be very easy to catch and also very deadly which brings me to the swine flu the swine flu 
was the same type of flu as the Spanish influenza, very contagious, which is why it was in the news. However, it wasn't as deadly as the Spanish flu, but still very, very contagious. And it could have mutated. Typically, they mutate less dangerous as they progress, but it could have gone the other way. Most scary is that at the end of the book, the scientists quoted use the words like likely and probable when referring to another outbreak of this type in our lifetime. As a matter of fact, we're overdue. As a matter of fact, there's a mass grave that was they held a contest to put a plaque and they didn't know what to put on the plaque for the mass grave. As a matter of fact, that plaque was featured in the movie Shutter Island at the opening. And I believe it says, I'm probably not remember this correctly word for word, remember us for we too have loved, laughed, and lived which I think is incredibly appropriate, especially since a lot of the guys that I talked to recently in our conversation, most of them didn't even know anything about the Spanish influenza. Given another 20, 30 years, I wonder how many more people will forget about it. And it's just odd how time has a way of erasing even these most horrible events in our history. A very insightful book, but at times was dry. Like I said, it's very detailed. Reading about these uh, newspaper reports that would report about the dead, it eventually gets a little bit depressing when they refer to the mass graves like they're stacking cordwood at the back of hospitals because they're running out of body bags. A little bit bleak, but a very good also, book. Also, don't forget to check out my book, Generation's End, now released on hardcover only, hopefully coming soon in an ebook format. And if everything goes well, hopefully audiobook will follow. Also, I'll post a link below for the time lapse of the jacket design. I'd love to hear how you, what you guys think of it. Check it out and I hope you guys like it.